Uh, first of all, congratulations on the victory. At Media Day, you said that fighters like, like Hakeem, the high-level strikers, are, fight, are the types of fighters that you excel against, you know, because of your style. So is it safe to say this is how the fight, the fight played out as you expected it? Yeah, I think uh, I think Hakeem's idea of my striking was going to be uh, rudimentary, and he was going to kind of blow through me. Um, but the problem is, is uh, when you train, you know, the standard kickboxing, uh, and then you fight someone that's like, you know, a bit unusual. It's really hard to take down their timing, and so I think he was having a really hard time in the first round, and uh, yeah, I don't think he was able to catch on to my timing and my range and my a little bit unusual striking. Did you hear his comments at Media Day where he kind of dismissed your style of striking? He said he's just mm-hmm. not, he's, he, his, your, your, your style of striking is just nothing compared to what he's fought. Yeah, no, and that's what I thought, you know, and, uh, but people don't understand. And it's not even that. It's, uh, you know, it's cardio, it's pace, it's attitude, man. Like, you can be the best striker in the world, but if you don't have the ability, if you don't have the heart to push the pace, uh, you know, things go out the window. They say, you know, you punch a black belt in the face, he turns into a brown belt. It's the same one on the feet, you know, you punch a guy in the face. His, his skill level starts to drop. And I think um, uh, I have the attitude that's really hard to deal with with some guys, especially clean technical strikers. You know, I, I, I want to get in your face. I want to get it dirty. And I don't mind getting punched to punch you. So uh, I think he likes to be clean. And if he can't be clean, it frustrates him. You were finding a lot of success with that uppercut throughout yes, the fight. Yes. Is that something you trained specifically for this fight or you just saw it in the moment? Uh, I learned that from street fighting techniques that I learned back when I was a kid. No, uh, uh, I like to grab the back of the head and I just like chuck that uppercut because a lot of people will just, you know, you pull their head down and start hitting them. And I'm tall guy, so I get a lot of guys that kind of duck under. So um, the uppercut works well. Uh, mm-hmm. The problem with that is sometimes if you're trying to hit an uppercut, your hand is low so they can come over the top. So every time I can clench somebody like that, I know I can get a couple free shots. And uh, I definitely felt like I hurt him a few times with that uppercut. You're also pretty excited to have the big cage so you have more room to work in there. Uh, so how was it having more space to fight? I walked in there and I didn't even realize it was, I didn't seem much bigger than the apex. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was just, uh, I've been, I don't know if I just was like, uh, my eyes were bigger or something, but um, I've been really trying to focus on seeing everything. And I think that helped me out because sometimes when you get tunnel vision, it looks a lot bigger and uh, just trying to be in the moment and see everything I think helped out. But yeah, for me, it didn't really seem much bigger than the apex. I, uh, when I was imagining it being bigger, I thought it was going to be a huge landscape because last time I was in, uh, the MGM for a, a pay-per-view when I fought in 2016, it seemed huge. And I think it was because it was tunnel vision for me. But, uh, yeah, it didn't seem much bigger than the Apex. In, in that third round, Daniel Cormier on the commentary was using the first two rounds you very clearly won. Yes. He said, fights like this are the why I don't like open scoring because if you're up, you know you're up 2-0, you might coast. In yeah, the yeah. Round. So what is your take on that? Did he, was he thinking I was coasting? I don't know if he was saying you were, but he said, like, this is the type of fight fighters might coast. If they're up too I mean, for sure. I, you know, I was up two rounds and, uh, usually it doesn't matter to me. Like usually I'm really trying to just like finish somebody a hundred percent of the time. But, uh, you know, I had, I had my coaches in my ear telling me to, to be patient. You know, sometimes you can get in trouble with a guy like Hakeem. I don't want to just take him lightly in the third round. Be like, Oh, I got this. And he, he hits me with a, a jumping knee or a, an overhand, right. And I get knocked out and I lost the fight. I should have won. So um, and I don't think I was coasting like, at any point. I know I don't know if he was saying that or not, but uh, I think he was just using this fight as yeah. an example. I mean, even when I had his back, I was really trying to pepper him up. And I think the only time I bloodied him up was when I had his back and I was peppering up, pe- peppering him up with my kind of my knuckles in the front and the elbows from the side. And what was your uh, reaction when he came in overweight on Friday? Yeah, you know, I used to get upset when people miss weight, but now I love it, man. It's a uh, Peterson miss weight, and I made a lot of money off Peterson because of the fight of the night, and so. Uh, you know, I encourage and, uh, and actually uh, am happy if people miss weight because I know I'm going to get paid. And but like I was telling somebody earlier, by the time they're going to miss weight, I've already rehydrated because I've made weight at 9 o'clock and they miss weight at 10.30. And 10.30, I'm probably like 10 pounds heavier than I was. So uh, I don't think there's even an advantage. I mean, they didn't really kill themselves like I had to kill myself. I'm a big guy, man. and uh, But I don't feel sorry for guys that miss weight because uh, or taking their money because they weren't worried about when I, me when I was – about to die in my garage making weight. So, uh, you know, I'm, he, he apologized to me and I appreciate the professionalism, but uh, the money that got sent my way is even better. What happened in your garage that you almost died? Oh, no, I, I was cutting weight in my garage. Like, and you know, like I'm, I'm a big guy. So cutting weight, you feel like you're dying. And you know, I was in my garage cutting weight. You know, the last three pounds suck for me too, bro. Like I'm six foot one, man, I'm a big guy. And uh, you know, Hakeem has the weight to lose. You know, uh, he's made weight, you know, he's fought eight times in the UFC. and made weight every single time. So like the fact that he missed weight is really unusual to me. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know what's going on with him, you know, maybe in his uh, mindset or his career. So uh, I, I wish him all the best. But, uh, you know, I come here to make weight. There's too much money on the line to be giving percentages away. You know, I already give percentages to management and coaches and that kind of thing. I don't want to give percentages to my opponent. Um, and if he wants to take my paycheck, he's going to have to come get it. You know what I'm saying? Finally, uh, when do you want to get back in there? And now that you do have this big win, at one point, can you start, like, choosing fighters that you would like to fight down the line? <laughs> You know, I think the only fight I really got that I chose was the Peterson fight. Um, but, uh, you know, honestly, I, I loved I loved uh, the Dawadu fight because I knew he was going to stand and bang. He's, I knew he wasn't really going to care about taking people down. And uh, I was willing to exchange with him. And, uh, man, I, I, I'm pretty much healthy. And I took a little too much time off in between uh, the Peterson fight and this fight. But it was a good time for me to really, like, kind of reset. Uh, but I would be willing to fight, you know, you know, within before the year's up for sure. Uh, and, uh Man, I, I would really just like to fight another striker, you know, like guys like uh, like that Luis Saldana is a long, lanky striker. I think he would be a fun one. Caceres, I've always wanted to fight Caceres, but I don't even know what he's got going on. Uh, but long, lanky strikers are always fun because uh, I, this is what I am. And I'm, you know, I think we can mix it up and have like a fight of the night. Hey, Julian. Right here. Hey. Um, I'm just curious how much the um, craziness of the last few days affected you. Were you at all worried that the card might not happen? Like what was going on maybe just in your mind? Uh, no, I wasn't worried about the card not happening. I was just, uh, you know, I was just kind of entertained by the whole situation anyways, like seeing like how they had to basically took three of the main fights and, you know, shuffled them around and made it work. You know, I, it almost seemed like it was planned a little bit, but, um, who knows what the situation was, but uh, it didn't affect me, you know, me and Hakeem were the, uh, the, uh, the main event of the prelims. And, uh, you know, I was just focused on that and focused on uh, one thing and one thing only, and that's winning my fight. And so uh, everything else is just whatever. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I'm glad the fight happened because, or I'm glad the fight card stayed intact because uh, I think it actually made it to be a better card uh, with the matchups now. Do you think if it was, um, if, it, if you were one of those six fighters, if you would have been able to kind of switch around that easily, or do you feel like, you know, what's the mindset of like, hey, I've got a new opponent with, in 24 hours, would you have been able to do that? Man, I took Sean Woodson on three days notice. You know, I fought, I fought Jordan on 10 days notice. Uh, you know, and money talks, you know, I know people, I know you had to, they rene renegotiated their contracts and, you know, probably, you know, made a pretty penny for some of the switch offs. So uh, I know the UFC really appreciates guys that are willing to step up in these types of situations. And uh, if it happened to me, I would have been just as willing to do it as they were. Hey, Julian over here in the back. Oh, hey, I was. What are your plans to buy with uh, Hakeem's money? <laughs> drugs, baby. A lot of drugs. Uh, no, uh, you know, my wife, <laughs> my wife handles all my finances because uh, if it was up to me, I'd probably uh, be blowing it on uh, things I shouldn't have. But, uh, you know, honestly, just try not to think about the money. I'm honestly just thinking about the career, man, and, and, and just being in the UFC and, and enjoying the win, man. The win's the most important thing. The money's, you know, separate and, uh, uh, if I can, you know, put more money away for later on in life, that's great. I just want to be able to uh, go in there and perform to my fullest abilities. And I was able to do that tonight. So I'm satisfied with the win more than the money. Congrats. Thank you. Hey, Julian, straight ahead. Yes. Speaking of the money, two to one underdog, betting dog this weekend. Let's go. The consensus across the betting world is that you're not the dog. You were the safest bet of the week. Yeah. Easy money, good value. Do you pay attention to that stuff at all? Do you tell your buddies to bet you? What's that like going in? Uh, I'm a bit of a gambler myself, um, but my wife, uh, you know, tries to hold me, uh, pull the reins in on that. But, um, yeah, I seen I was the underdog and, uh, I think it's just, you know, people who, I mean, it's a little weird when I'm the underdog because I have like a, you know, the last, you know, five fights that I had before this, you know, four and one against, you know, Jordan, Nate Land, where, uh, Sean Woodson, you know, Steven Peterson, even, you know, you got guys like this that I'm beating, uh, and having great fights and exciting fights, you know, you never see me go out there and fold. I'm not going to fold. If you're going to win, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to turn me off. So like, uh, the fact that I was that big of an underdog is a bit, you know, skeptical. And I think, um, but you know, Hakeem's been around, he's been in the top 15 and, uh, or around that area. So I think that's maybe where that came in. And, you know, the betting, the guys that are making these betting odds aren't in the gym training with me, you know, they're not in the gym training with Hakeem. So they don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Next fight, you expect to be a little closer to even money there, considering <laughs> who it is. But would you be surprised being a big dog next fight? You know what? I like being the underdog. I really enjoy that. Uh, and I like my friends to make money off me, too. You know, I, I, I like people betting on me and making money. So uh, to be the underdog, I, I actually uh, uh, appreciate that more than being the favorite. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you.
Did you feel that the weight issue that Hakeem had, did you feel that it affected his performance any tonight? Did you feel him lacking any? I guarantee you, if you can't beat the scale, you're not going to beat me. So, like, and anybody can get, you know, anybody can win any given night. But, like, in, a, in an all-out fight, if neither one of us get finished, you're not going to beat me if you can't even beat the scale. And I think mentally uh, it was a lapse of his judgment maybe, but uh, also a little bit of his uh, preparation or even mental focus and fortitude. I mean, I go and run, like, 15 miles, like, on my rest days because I know it's going to help me get my, my body leaner to make the weight. You know, like I said earlier, I'm a big featherweight. Look at me. I stand next to Hakeem. I probably look like I'm in a different weight class because I'm a big guy and I make the weight. And uh, like I said earlier, you know, I kill myself to make the weight, but I'm also willing to die in the cage. And I think if you're not willing to kill yourself to make the weight, how can you be willing to die in the cage? And I think uh, you've seen a little bit, a little bit of that tonight with Hakeem. That being said, when you came in, did you feel like you had a little bit of an edge on him going into tonight just because of that? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, you, when you're in a cage with somebody, you can kind of feel the tension and the sway of things kind of going back and forth that normal people outside aren't seeing, but you can kind of just feel it. And uh, I just felt like he was like okay with just surviving until maybe he could throw something big at me, like almost like a Hail Mary. And I felt like I was in control of the fight the entire time and uh, and uh, and never really had a lapse in my judgment. So, um, you know, like I said before, you know, if you're having a lapse of judgment with the weight the day before you fight, uh, you're going to have that in the cage as well. And I think uh, I felt that for sure. And maybe with that, with the confidence, it seemed like your hands and your striking seemed maybe the better that I've seen in quite some time. Did it feel like that when you were in there? Did you feel like everything you were throwing yeah. was coming out perfect? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for saying that because uh, it's nice to get acknowledged for the things that you're working on. And, you know, I always have, you know, the ability to, like, brawl with somebody and have the toughness for that. But uh, to be able to technically outstrike someone who is a striker, who prides themselves on being a striker – is something I look forward to more than just brawling. And I'm willing to brawl. Like I was, you know, I was willing to at any given time just put, you know, just go for it. But uh, it was a lot better. It's more satisfying to uh, outstrike the striker. Awesome. Congrats on the victory. Thank you so much. Julian, congrats on the big win. Yes. As someone who lives in Vegas, you cut weight in your garage. That's insane. <laughs> well, it's 100 degrees, man. And I got a Peloton in there. I got a sauna. And, uh, you know, I just run, you know, you know, bite the weight off and, uh, and, you know, I don't want to get my house dirty. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm sweating. And, you know, when, when I'm getting low on weight and I have to, you know, I've got to pee, I just just hammer it out. You know, I'll just pull it out in the garage and just pee and hey, keep going. I don't got enough energy to go inside. Right on, man. Uh, you look tremendous today. Congrats on that big win. You look tremendous. Congrats on the big win. Thank you. Everything looked like it was firing on all cylinders. That third round where you could have coasted, but you opted not to, you got more fired up. What, what were you saying? Because you, you got all in your, in the zone. What was going on there? Oh, well, uh, my coach uh, was was talking about uh, control his right hand with my right hand to try to get the rear naked choke. But I had watched one of Hakeem's fights, and, uh, and Evalov had his back the entire fight and couldn't rear naked choke him. And Evalov's a good, you know, a good grappler, so I figured – I mean, I'm not saying if Evalov couldn't rear naked choke him, then I can't. But I just, uh, I had told my coach when he was saying uh, right hand to right hand and like try to sink in. And I was like, oh, I just want to punch him, coach. I'm sorry. I just, I just want to punch him because I figured he was going to be a hard and difficult guy to finish from the back. But I could pepper him up and, you know, and just show, you know, show everybody that I was still trying to, you know, still trying to hurt him in those spots and not just trying to coast. Okay. And two quick things for me. How bad does your knee hurt? Because you landed a flying knee in the first <laughs> round, and you that looked like a like an ender right there. That was a yeah. game changer. How he walked back to his cage from that corner, you're like, wow, he's got a chin on him. No, he for sure has a chin on him. I there was like probably three or four times, it's, even in the first round itself, I seen his eyes kind of roll back, and I felt, and I, I seen his legs shake, and I was like, it's only one or two more punches. But I was trying to be a bit more measured and not just explode on him even though I, had, I knew i had the cardio to do that and still be able to uh last if he was able to uh withstand the uh the, the onslaught um but uh yeah he i mean for him to be able to uh round after round i think probably like five or six times i heard him in the entire fight was able just to you know uh keep his composure and and hold on uh was pretty uh impressive on his end yeah, no doubt, man. And that Caceres fight sounds fantastic. Yeah. You said tall, lanky, paging yep. uh Hooper. Yeah, I mean, Hooper, uh, Hooper's cool, too. I mean, the only thing with Hooper is uh, he's not much of a striker. He's kind of just a grappler. Uh, and he's a little bit, you know, he's young. He's new to this sport. I don't think they would want to put him against me. But, uh, 
Uh, like I said, long lanky strikers are just fun to go with, or actually, honestly, any striker, you know, I like to mix it up with these guys, uh, especially guys that think they're the better strikers because uh, I always, uh, you know, I, I kind of take them off their own game plan in the middle, in the beginning of the fight. And uh, it's really interesting to see how they try to adjust from there. Right on, my man. Well, congrats on the win. Well done. Thank you so much. Barbosa's fighting Taporia. Oh, Jesus. How about that one? That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Is that it? Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good night.